so hello everybody and in today's session we are going to discuss about representing the fractions on a number line so let's just get started so now what we intend to do is to mark this fraction which is 1 by 2 on a number line and I have this number line here now let us quickly recollect what do we mean by this fraction 1 and a 1 by 2 or its half so if you recollect the denominator tells the number of parts into which the whole is divided and numerator says the parts that we have been taken out from the whole that is the way a fraction is represented so now this denominator here tells us that we we have two parts but two parts of what right so now just let's try to understand what does this half mean I mean you would have used this half give me half an apple or give me half of anything right so this is half is a uh, half is a quantity which is less than one I think you would agree on that right so what we can do essentially is we know that there is one and one is divided into two parts so let's try to represent this so we'll mark a point here on the line which we'll call it zero and then somewhere we'll just take some uh, one another point and which can could be of any length I have just taken it randomly it could be one centimeter one meter whatever and then we mark this as one right so this is it now this half right it lies somewhere between zero and one it will actually lie exactly between 0 and 1 I mean your half is exactly right so what now now this 2 here is the denominator it says that the whole has to be divided into two parts so now I have to divide this unit into two parts so what we can do is we can just take exactly the the half or the middle point right and then so what we have done here is we have divided this 1 into two parts this is like your part 1 and this is the part number 2 right and we are representing one half half of it so when when we are starting to count a fraction right half you start from 0 and just take the first part right so from this part here here to here so at this point you will have 1 by 2 which is half of it so this is how we can represent 1 by 2 on a number line so what we understood here is that this fraction half is lying between 0 and 1 and it is exactly in middle okay, because it's a half now let us continue this example further so now we have to mark 1 by 3 on a number line now when you say 1 by 3 so it means we are just considering one part out of three parts right so what we can do as we did earlier is that we mark a 0 and then we mark 1 okay we have marked 1 here now this denominator here tells us the number of parts into which the whole is divided so what we are assuming the whole comprises of 1 right the whole is comprising of 1 and we have to divide it into 3 parts so what we do is we divide this distance from 0 to this point into 3 equal parts so I'm just trying my best to get 3 equal parts and I hope it is okay so this is what we have done I think this one is big okay so yeah so we have divided into 3 equal parts so in this case this is you can say this is part 1 this part here then here this is part 2 and this part here is part 3 now what we are supposed to do is to represent 1 by 3 so we just need to take one part out of these three parts so it becomes this point this is one part out of three so essentially this much is one third of this whole here and what 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 would we do if we were asked to represent 2 by 3 2 thirds two thirds of an quantity so we three is like as you know so we already have three parts and then we have to take two parts so in that, that case what we would do is that 
in addition to this you also have to consider this part so this then becomes 2 by 3 and what if you are asked to represent 3 by 3 now essentially you know that we are considering all the three parts of the divided three parts so in this case we will go even further right because this is the third part out of the three parts so this is also 3 by 3 because if you just do this this is actually equal to the whole part right so this is how we can represent another number now let us continue our discussion further so now in this case we are going to use another example and we say that let us mark the number 3 by 5 on this number line so when we so again 3 by 5 is less than 1 as you can make it out but then we need to find out the number of parts into which the whole is to be divided so in this case we look at the denominator the denominator is 5 so we have to divide the whole into 5 parts and then mark 3 parts out of it so first let us try to mark 0 and then I'll just say 1 over here this is just a on the number line now we have to have almost 5 equal parts so what I'm trying to do I'm going to try my best to get the equal parts so this is going to be 1 and uh, we have this to be 2 and do we have this as so this is going to be 1 2 3 and I know it's not very accurate I think let us try to redo it again so that we have almost equal 5 parts so let me take 1 let us take 2 3 and 4 yeah this looks better so ideally we should have measured this to be equal distances but I am just putting them approximate here at the moment so now what I have done is I have divided this whole into 5 parts so this is going to be 1 here so this is just let me change the color so you can see this is part 1 this is second part then this is the third part this is the fourth part and this one is the fifth part so we can see that the whole is divided into five parts and we are supposed to take out three parts out of this five so we start from here so it's like this one here it is going to be one fifth that is one parts out of five this is going to be two parts out of five and here is three parts out of five so this is our required fraction on the number line right similarly I mean if you can even go ahead further and no denote these fractions this this is going to be four parts out of five and this one as we saw earlier is like all five parts considered out of the five parts into which the whole is divided so having said that this is one more example in which we are increasing the size of the denominator so if you just observe it right in the first case we just had uh, divided the one the number one on the line in two parts then we divided into three parts and then into five and now we are we are dividing this into ten parts so how can I represent one by ten zero by ten five by ten ten by ten or number nine so essentially what we need to do is we need to divide this distance from 0 to 10 in 10 parts so I'll just start here so this is 10 trying to make 10 parts this is like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 so this is I'll put this as 1 so we have just used this way actually we should first write 0 1 and then divide into 10 parts and so these are the so so we, you can see that this distance from here 0 to 1 is divided into 10 equal parts and now we are supposed to mark these fractions 1 by 10 0 by 10 5 by 10 and 10 by 10 so now let us have a look at 1 by 10 so we just need to consider the first part 
So this is going to be 1 by 10. This is one part out of 10 parts. The second one is 0 by 10. It means we are not considering anything from the parts, right? So 0 by 10 is this. It means no part is being considered. Then we have 5 by 10. So it is like one, uh, we'll start from here. First part, second, third, fourth and fifth. So this is like we are having 5 parts out of 10 parts. And what about 10 by 10? So this is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So this is going to be 10 parts out of 10 considered. So this was one more example. Now just ponder one thing. How many fractions can lie between 0 and 1? So if you just think of the examples that we took, what we essentially did is we tried to increase the size of the denominator. That is first it was like 2, then first it was 2, then 3, then 5, then 10. Right? So what essentially we were doing is, what we did is we took just two points on the number line, that is 0 and 1. Right? And we are just dividing this into the parts which were specified in the denominator. So for example, when you had 1 by 2, let's just take these examples. Then we have when we learned the example about 3 by 5, and then we learned one more example about let's say 5 by 10. So in all these three cases, what we did is we took uh, we in first case we divided the distance between 0 and 1 in two parts, in the other one we divided it between five parts, and in the third one we divided it between 10 parts. Now let us say if I say consider mark a fraction 3 by 100 can you do that so you what essentially you need to do is write down 0 write down 1 and then what we essentially do is this distance between 0 and 1 needs to be divided into 100 parts 1 2 3 4 and so on and this one will be 99th part and this can be 100 part right and 3 by 100 would be something 1 2 and 3 so yeah you will have three parts out of this hundred parts. Right? So if even if I increase this denominator, now let's say I take a huge number, a very huge number. Let's take uh, 35 parts out of let us say some hundred thousand. Can 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 I represent this fraction on a number line? Yes, I can. What I essentially need to do is zero. 1 and then what we have to do is to divide this distance between 0 and 1 into 100,000 parts. That is what we need to do and then we just mark the 35th, 35 parts out of it. Let's say that it comes somewhere just here. It will be very small because there are like 100,000 and then maybe we we can mark it like this is this is going to be 35th five parts out of hundred thousand that is what it so what happens if we keep on increasing number we can still represent the fraction between 0 and 1 so essentially we can say that a huge number of fractions lie between 0 and 1 it is like infinite fractions lie between 0 and 1 because no matter how big a denominator you take you can actually divide this one into as many small parts as possible. Hence, the fractions that we can make will be huge, right? And you should also remember that uh, the more, the bigger the denominator, the bigger the denominator, the more the fractions you will have. So, for example, in this case, when we have one by two, so you you will have just three fractions. That is zero by two, one by two, and two by two, which is one. And when you have like five parts. Then you have even more fractions 0 by 5, 1 by 5, 2 by 5, 3 by 5, 4 by 5 and 5 by 5 and so on. So, so, so the more you increase the denominator, the more you will have the fractions. So that was our discussion. About